Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh, slightly less than one minute to ignition, and everything is go. Roger. Apollo 11, this is Did Houston. You, know? you are go for TLI. Over. Today we're going into space for some space archaeology. In recent years it has been suggested that archaeologists should start recording and preserving elements of the space age. In particular, the space race of the 1960s saw the dawn of a new era for all of humanity. The ages of stone, the Bronze Age, the Iron Age and history itself had apparently led us to this new era, the space age. On the 20th and 21st of July 1969, the moon became our first interstellar archaeological site. Human beings had been to the moon. But also the journey getting there had created unprecedented archaeological remains. The laboratories, test sites and launch pads necessary to get to the moon are undoubtedly unique in human history. The specific technologies and structures employed on these sites are only useful for launching rockets. Because of this specific use, many such sites around the world lie in disrepair, ruined vestiges of early space programs. In addition to this, the process of getting into space creates a huge amount of debris. Elements are meant to fall off during the launch process, but also parts of spaceships still float around Earth to this day. Everything from satellites to nuts and bolts, space junk, the evidence is literally all around us. And it's this kind of junk which is increasingly in need of interpretation. We're already starting to forget what exactly that weird thingamajig does anyway. Yet it is precisely these kinds of details which will help future human beings chart how exactly we made our first steps into space. The details really do matter. And yet historically it is the details which tend to go first. This reminds me of our current efforts to chart humanity's evolution and our expansion out of Africa, in particular when we look at the Neanderthals. Neanderthals are popularly characterised as thuggish and simple, making use of only the most basic tool technology, for example. But archaeologists are realising that it is the crucial details which are eluding us, in particular objects made out of things that rot. It is likely that the key to understanding the full capacity of Neanderthals lie with things like wood and leather, substances and mediums which aren't typically preserved. Just because Homo sapiens happen to have some art preserved on rock walls doesn't, for example, mean that Neanderthals didn't produce masterworks on bark or leather. Sometimes it's not a lack of preservation, but rather our assumptions which bias history. For example, in ancient Rome. Rome is famous for its civilization, and its civilization is famous largely because of Roman writers. Yet there are lots of details about everyday life which simply elude us, and that's because the writers assume that, well, I don't need to write that down, everyone knows how to do that. The more obvious something is to the writer, the less likely it is to be recorded, and yet the devil definitely lies in the details. So perhaps this should be the next frontier for archaeology, our continuing mission to ensure that the space age is not forgotten through a lack of preservation or the assumptions of modern man. After all, it would truly be a shame if we became space Neanderthals. <laughs>